All right, guys, welcome to a Sunday morning in the shed. It is Sunday, you can tell, because I have my Scott H. Byram t-shirt on. You see the crosses there? Yeah. And so here's what I need from y'all. I need you to put down that mason jar full of strychnine and them rattlesnakes you're handling and pay attention. If you do not have this Scott H. Byram gospel song collection, then you are a sinner. So wake up, sinner. That's right. Sold out to the devil a collection of gospel cuts by the Reverend Scott H. Byram. You need to get this. Now, let's get back to what it is we were doing. And this is episode four of a neck reset on an Econo arch top. This one is the prep. You've seen me do two episodes. Let me grab Chick Flick Teal Pointer here. The first one was an introduction of why would you be doing this? Why would you spend $400 on a guitar that needs $400 worth of work that will be worth $250 when you're done? Wake up, sinner, that's right. So once you got through that one and you're still all stubborn, then we decided we're going to show you how to make a steamer. Then the next episode was about a neck re restraint device. I mean a body restraint device that's going to allow you to get everything strapped on and all the scrap apparatus you're going to need to pop this neck off of here. So today, finally, we are going to pop the neck off of this guitar using said scrap apparatus. Now, if this is the first episode you've seen, you want to stop and back up and click that eye popping up there and catch up through all these painful episodes that bring us to this. Because if you don't understand this, the level that which you will screw up your guitar will be far beyond what we're going to do to this one today. So that said, let's get set up on the bench and I'm going to show you how to get this neck off here without completely destroying the guitar. Don't forget, if you don't have this, you are short on a big portion of your life. Now let's get to the bench. Oh, I'll give you a link below. Hey, shout out Scott H. Byron. Go Longhorns. All right, here we go. Before we get rolling here, a couple things I want to point out. I got a hot plate here, and I have an iron. Check this out. Now we'll put the iron on the hot plate, and we're going to turn on the hot plate. You can tell it's on because of the red light that just went on there. Now, this iron is old. It had a cord. It still does have a cord, but this thing appears to be a little bit dangerous. It would work. It's got an on-off switch. Uh, yeah, safety last. So we're just going to heat up our iron on the hot plate. Now, the hot plate will come in handy when we're heating up our knives, uh, like so, to get under the end of the fingerboard, which I'll show you in a little bit. We have a nice collection of bits here. Look at that. I really like this set because you can't put the bits in the wrong set. It has all kinds of different bits. We go from the smallest one to bigger ones. And then I have this one that will drill quite a long ways and down into the neck pocket. So we have our drill bits there. Um, we have a couple of pieces of wood that will help us out. We have our tape dispenser. We're going to need to tape some stuff off. We have our teapot that will heat up on the hot plate. And then we also have our neck removal jig, which has the clamps on the side, which have rubber tubing to protect the body. So that's some of the stuff you're going to see us use here. The first thing we want to do is get the lower portion of the neck, this here, bottom part of the fingerboard, cut loose. And we're going to do that. I've seen people take necks off 
and they forget to do this part so they're steaming this off this isn't cutting loose so we're going to cut this loose and let's get on that first i'll clean this off and give you a close up all right don't forget our bean bags these are just velvet bags with bags of beans in them uh, they work out real good for what we want to do anyway we're going to get this set up here where we can see it close see how that works pull that back a little bit center this up there we go so I'm going to take this screw out of here and I'm going to use some light tack tape to tape this off because when you're heating things up you don't want to cause this uh, finish what's left of it to dull out if you start putting steam on it or a heat gun or something like that it, it warps it right away you'll see it on the surface you also see cracks now part of this fix is this is sunken in so this neck is starting to come back in on itself so we're going to fix that too but first thing we want to do is tape this off with some low tack tape get rid of this screw here and that way when we're working and prying and getting our knife up underneath here this will be protected okay when you're working on a guitar you always want to have a metal box with a magnet because oops we also need the rag there we go and because on these old guitars like this you want to use your original pieces when you can that magnet will help you out but you put that off to the side. Now, I'm going to take some of this low stick tape. Again, this tape dispenser over here is the best thing ever because you just reach in under here. Again, low tack tape is the best. We just put that there where it's going to give us enough room. I can hear. I can hear. I can, I don't know what I can. Maybe I can feel that old iron starting to heat up. Let me tell you about the iron while I'm working this here. That iron will sit on top of these frets here, right here, and it won't touch the wood. It'll just heat through the frets, and that will cause this board to heat up right here. Now, we're going to be looking to get down into the neck pocket where everything is glued and from all appearances that appears to be the 15th fret so we're going to want to pull this fret we're going to work want to work any glue that's loose i think once this is all done i'm going to refret this and get these frets up a little bit higher but again i want to make sure that everything that we've got here is protected when we start to pry on things you want to remember if you're using heat it's going to have an effect on the adhesion quality of the tape and make it stick where you don't want again have rags ready so you can use that instead of scratching and prying more tape is better than less there we okay before we get going here um, in the first episode I talked about fret protectors you can put a rubber band on these and when you're filing frets and doing whatever these come in handy we talked about these fret pliers that are graduated to a point they're not for cutting they're for getting under something and kind of wedging it up little by little and then you've got these spacers that are ten thousandths and twenty thousandths a lot of luthier supplies are in standard english or american whatever you want to call it not metric so uh again we're going to want to heat these up here and that happens with this iron now you know that irons you can tell when they're hot because you can play the grandma spit game you spit on them and then you do somebody's shirt after that but we're going to want to make sure that when we put this on here that it's going to heat up these frets and not be touching that or something like that errantly so we're going to sit that there for a minute or two like so this is an american triangle iron 
just so you know. Have to have one. Every yard sale in the world, I would suggest you hit it. But what's happening here now is we're just wasting time listening to me jabber on and on. The heat from the iron is going down through the frets, and it's going to heat up this area here. I'm going to take my pallet knife, and I'm going to put it on the hot plate over there. You see that? And heat it up too. Oh, this is a beauty iron. Not only is it functional, but it is beautiful. All right, so now I'm going to take that off. You can tell they've changed colors. I'm going to put that iron over there on wood so I can smell it. Burning everything. And now I'm going to go to the 15th fret. And I'm going to squeeze little by little. See, it's popping up already. And I really, really don't have to work that hard. It's popped up there. Now I can take the ten thousandths. And because it's popped up, I can put it underneath there, like so. You see that? You see how it's slipping in? Right there like that? And then I can go along, and that gives me another little bit to pry up on. I don't want to just yank it out of there, because if the tangs come out crooked, then I end up having a messed up fret slot. I really don't want that. So again, we're just going to put this, see how that straddles that like so. This is the 20,000th. There we go. You can just barely see where the tangs were. And come out pretty clean not damaged again we're going to put this in our double mint twins box there we go all right so you can see over here that I have my iron back on the hot plate and I have my pallet knives underneath the iron and on the hot plate so they're ready to go uh, when I start wanting to work this loose. And remember, it's not going to come loose all the way up here because everything is still attached. So we're just getting this out of the way. Um, I do want you to notice that if I put a straight edge here, there is daylight right under here. So this fretboard is actually caving in and concaving about equal to, if I were to measure that gap right in the center right there where I can see daylight, it is about the same as the gap that's forming on the bottom of the neck here. So the whole thing is the real issue here is this is caving in on itself. So as part of the fix, we're going to have to jack this back up. We'll build an overpass or something in there like we did in the episode about the Ibanez Hummingbird. I'll give you a link to it right up there right about now. Is that the right edge? Yeah. Okay. So, knives are heated up. We've got our trusty rag. We're going to get a couple of the small ones started in here. Yeah, that glue, when it's heated up, this is all high glue underneath here. We get these working in here like so. And get that glue cutting loose. There we go. This is just something you want to be very patient with because it's going to take a while and you don't want to crack anything. Just keep putting your knives back underneath there and working on it until you can get the bigger one going in here like so. Catch up with you in a bit. Okay, we've worked through this most of the way. We've got this hot now. Here we go, all the way up. It's hanging on right there. So I don't want to pry this up too much because we haven't cut the. Oh, there we go, right there. 
let that heat up just a little bit. Again, we haven't cut the neck loose yet, but our next thing will be to drill a couple exploratory holes down through here with a very small bit, like so, to see where we access the glue joint right here. And from what I can tell, the resistance that I'm catching on this, let's use a little bit smaller one here, put this one back on here. These pallet knives, you can't beat them. Yeah, the resistance is right there, which means I think there's a clump of glue coming up right there. There we go. We're all the way through. You can see that. So I just keep working this back and forth. But the resistance that I'm feeling is right past the slot, which means I'm going to try to drill just a little bit of an angle this way. Like so, I'll need two of them. And then we'll enlarge that to the point where it'll take the inflator needle. Last thing before we drill our holes, I want you to notice these marks right here. Had we not marked this off and masked it off and, and done all that, because if you see how the action here is, we would have ended up putting a lot of scrapes and scratches here. So again, this tape dispenser is the best thing I've ever seen especially for doing binding, because you're having to do a lot of binding work. But this tape is incredible for protecting the surface of your guitar. There we go. Okay, I notice I've let this pallet knife in here, and it's still warm because it's heating up the glue. Um, I'm going to put a piece of tape right here, and then I'm going to mark on that piece of tape with my love pencil about where I'm going to drill the exploratory hole like that. And now I've got a very small bit. And I'm going to set the clutch on this thing way down. And I'm going to go in here into one of those tang grooves and drill in. I'll kill the, the noise now. Yeah, I hit the pocket right away. I can feel drilling through glue. So we're going to come back over here now to this one. Same thing. We're going to come in at an angle like this. And you could see the, the bit just went right through. So now we're going to come up to a little bit bigger bit. And following the same angle, we're going to enlarge this hole to the point where it accepts the inflator needle. From the teapot. Okay, while we're drilling this out, we're going to put our teapot on the hot plate. Notice we've got our safety valve golf tee here. Like so, we're just going to put, put that in there. In case something happens, it'll pop out. We want to make sure that the stuff we've used that's still hot is over here out of the way where it's not going to melt anything or burn us or anything like that because we're going to be giving our attention now to making sure this needle will fit down into the hole we drilled like that. So we've got one more size to come up, and I think we'll be pretty good. There we go. Easy money. Okay, you know those creamer or milk jug or whatever things that you have that you're going to throw in the recycling instead of the trash. And we cut one of those up like this. And then you take that pick punch. I don't know how many of us don't even play guitar, so we don't even need this. You slide this down in here like so, and then you click it like that. 
and you're going to have some spacers and we're get, going to get a few of those because you're going to see that we're going to need them here in a few minutes on our neck removal jig. Check that out. Okay, our teapot is heating up, so it's time to put the neck removal jig on. So this part right here where the bolt comes through the heel, we want to make sure that the heel of the guitar is there, like so. Let's pull that out of the way so you can see it right there, like so. And then we're going to put a rag and a couple pieces of foam up here. You want to remember this is an arch top right here. So if you go cranking this down, the arch is going to split wherever you put too much pressure on it. So we're going to put that there. We're going to make sure that the neck part is open here. And then we're going to put our bolts on on each side here with the washers so you clamp this down like this I'll get all four of them on and show you what it looks like okay we have our jig on everything's padded up we've got a gap right there you see it we're gonna put our threaded bolt that's gonna come up through there and run it up to the bottom of the where the the jig is flush there. Now all these little picks that we cut, we're gonna put a piece of cork paper in there like so, and then we can use a couple of these to shim this like that. So when we're pressing the bottom of the neck by screwing it up like this nothing will get damaged now the fun part is I can attest to you there is steam coming out of here you see I can feel it through my chick flick teal loincloth I'm going to stick this down in there and you can see it coming. Whoa, it is hot. Believe me, it is hot. So we will let it steam up both sides here. And then as that gets warm in here, we will be able to turn this screw and the neck will pop loose. Let's catch up when that starts to happen. Okay, we are getting close. I can tell, I can see the neck moving here. There we go, look at that. I believe I'm actually gonna get this as it happens. Let's get this out of the way. Look at that. Check it out. Success. Okay, now while we are here, and while this hide glue is all heated up, we're going to try to get this cleaned up as much as possible because we're going to need this to be clean when we set the angle on the neck and glue everything back up. These pallet knives come in really, really handy. Okay, while we are here, I wanna make sure that I take every opportunity to get as much of this hide glue and this old gunk that's in this pocket out, because that will make it much easier to make things glue back up. There's a lot of hide glue in here. And you can tell that it's cooling off because it's getting sticky, but a lot of it there. I want to be able to do the same thing with the neck. 
that actually came off very, very clean. And you can see that the holes were drilled there and there. Wait a minute. We got to do this the right way. There and there was the perfect spot to drill those holes. So, again, we're just going to get everything off of here. It's already starting to harden up there. But we'll scrape that off later. This broke loose very cleanly without cracking anything or anything like that. Again, like I said, the top here has settled in a little bit. And I think that while we're here, we may be able to take the opportunity to drill a couple of holes here, run a guitar string with a washer on through each one, have dental floss come into the F holes, and then put something up here and steam this up and jack this up a little bit until it sits in place. So while I'm here, sometimes you never get another chance is I would just put the neck removal jig on like so, take this little winch with the cutout so the strings or whatever you're hoisting can get right over this. You just simply sit this up here, run through your holes, and then crank this like so, pull everything up tight, steam it, and then let it cool off, and then relax this. I may even put a little shim underneath there, but I couldn't be happier with this. All right, wake up, sinners. It was just that easy. All you got to do is do it on Sunday and listen to some Scott H. Byram hymnal music. Link below. Anyway, here we are. We've got the neck off of the body, nice and clean, everything is good, and we did it with a teapot right there, $10 of the parts and another $40 of the parts here. Easy money. Um, I'm so impressed with myself, I am going to write you know what, I think I'm going to fangirl myself on my own page. You guys just give me a couple minutes before you flood me with your praise so I can give myself some. See you soon.